When we think about conditioning regimens for uh, the patient who's been newly diagnosed and is uh, moving on to a stem cell transplant, uh, we have uh, recommended for most patients a combination of bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. In fact, we present that as part of our consensus recommendations by the Mayo Clinic, the so-called MSMART uh, recommendations, which are available at msmart.org. Now, we did add the variation that for those patients with high-risk disease, one could consider a carfilzomib-based induction. Now, there's a lot of questions. You know, we traditionally do about four cycles, but, you know, should you keep going if the patient is still responding? And how far uh, along do you take uh, that uh, regimen until you decide you should move to transplant? The standard now is about four months. Uh, other questions are coming forward like, should we be testing a BOMAR? Should we be testing for MRD before stem cell transplant? We currently don't. We do that post stem cell transplant. But I think that's part of the process of clinical research that is currently ongoing. The question about what's the best conditioning regimen for transplantation is really interesting. And um, it's kind of a, a historic fact that um, 200 milligrams per meter squared of malphalan is the optimum regimen. And so people introduced um, total body irradiation into that. It increased toxicity. Our German colleagues uh, increased the dose to 220 milligrams per meter squared and it increased toxicity and early deaths. So we've settled almost universally on the use of melphalan. There are other regimens such as BEAM and there's much less evidence for BEAM, but sometimes in a patient that's relapsed and has already been exposed to melphalan, it's possible to consider using BEAM. So there's a number of lines of evidence that uh, tell you when it's optimum to use a transplant. I, I believe all the evidence stacks up for using it for newly diagnosed patients, but some patients believe you should use it at first relapse. Um, that's based on a study done by a French group led by Jean-Paul Fermont, uh, which seemed to suggest that the survival was the same if you did the transplant upfront or at relapse. The problem was that study is now very, very old the novel agents weren't available at that time. And even that study supported doing the transplant up front because the first disease-free period was very long. And that's a time when myeloma patients have their best survival and best quality of life. Transplantation um, occurs in about a quarter of the patients with multiple myeloma. And it's all autologous transplant at, that, at, at this time. Um, and 75% of patients don't undergo transplant for a variety of reasons. Maybe the majority of them are too old or they have comorbidities and they're not a candidate. But for the pe people that were going to do transplant, in that 25% of patients, maybe 30% of patients that get a transplant, I like to do the transplant right at best remission. Now the actual timing of when to do it, whether it's after four cycles or six cycles or eight cycles, really depends on how they responded to their initial therapy. I think we all in the myeloma community would prefer them to be uh, in what we call a very good partial remission or a VGPR, to have at least a 90% reduction in their myeloma burden before they go to transplant, because then post-transplant, they're more likely to get a very deep response.